Hi, this is Dr. Tom McFadden of Advanced Cosmetic Surgery. We're here in Greenville, South Carolina. We do the full gamut of surgical and non-surgical cosmetic procedures here. And uh, let's see what video topic we're going to cover today. Hi, this is Dr. Tom McFadden at Advanced Cosmetic Surgery here in Greenville, South Carolina. And today we're going to talk about breast reduction scars. Sometimes patients ask, will I have a scar? And the answer is you will always have a scar. Whenever an incision is made with a blade, you're always gonna have a scar. The key for us is to make that incision as imperceptible as we can. Uh, and we do a very good job hiding that and encouraging good wound healing so that the scar is as fine as it possibly can be. The, the blending of the tissue in terms of color is really up to the patient and again, nature. So we don't have any control over that. The thickness of the scar is essentially determined by the patient. There are things we can do to make things better and more in our favor, more in the patient's favor, to have a, a softer, thinner, uh, more blended scar. Uh, and we will certainly uh, employ those techniques when you have the procedure done. The patients ask, what will my scars look like? And the answer is, they'll look pretty much like this. Now this isn't, this is the plan, the technique that we basically use uh, whenever we reduce the breast, we have to shrink the skin envelope to match it. So the incision essentially is sort of a mosque shape with a little bit of a, a, a billowed belly, if you will, and then a crescent shape underneath. The areola, okay, that contains the nipple is moved up, the tissue underneath is retained in sort of a pyramid fashion, and then the tissue above that is removed both medially towards the middle and laterally towards the side, uh, and then we reclose it, and then you end up with your scars. This would be an example of the finished product. This may not project very well, but the finished scar ends up being right here, right here, and then right underneath in the inframammary crease where that portion is invisible. This scar here at the border of the areola and the normal pigmented skin is a nice uh, camouflage area where it doesn't show up very well. And believe it or not, this, which you would think is the most visible portion of the scar, usually ends up blending the best and being the least visible. My personal feeling is that middle portion ends up blending better because it actually ends up getting massaged more often. That's because women wear bras. That low grade massage ends up just blending that scar a whole lot better and so it becomes much less visible over time. The factors that influence the size and location of the scars, the location is pretty much gonna be as I've already described the size really depends on a couple things. It depends on if you have a normal amount of breast tissue that needs to be removed. If you have normal shape, uh, sometimes women have more tissue laterally, more tissue medially, medially uh, and some around underneath the arm. So that incision needs to be taken back to wedge out more tissue occasionally. So the technique that I use is very versatile. I think it's good for small, medium, large people. It's good for people that are very asymmetrical in different ways. You can be you know, one shape on one side, another shape on another side and match things up. Uh, but this technique is very versatile and, and is very, um, it allows for all those things to be done. People ask, are the scars going to be permanent? And the answer is yes, the scars are going to be permanent. Whenever you make an incision with a blade, you're going to have a scar. It is going to be there. The question is, how visible will it be? And our job as surgeons is to make it as least visible as we possibly can, given the patient's uh, general healing ability. Scars can be visible, and it depends, again, on the individual and their own healing properties. Uh, sometimes they're just about gone in three weeks. Sometimes they'll stay for 15 months. Uh, there's what I call red scar formers, people who get a lot of redness in their scars. Sometimes they remain 
fine and sometimes they stretch out a little bit. It depends a lot on the pre-existing stretchiness or damage to the tissue. That in, its, in and of itself will determine how wide a scar eventually will be. So for the red scar formers, uh, generally they take a long time for their redness or pinkness to go away, but in the long run, they usually end up really, really well. So again, we typically use a silicone scar cream that we'll start employing after removal of the sutures and the steri strips, uh, usually after seven days, and sometimes we'll start that at 14 days. We'll have you use that for about two to three months, and that helps uh, the scars heal much better. A massage can be helpful once the incisions are well healed. And so I wouldn't do that until maybe at least three, maybe four weeks afterwards. Then you can start massaging. You can start blending that incision in a little bit better. Uh, but I think the key thing for most incisions is to make sure that it maintains native moisture. Don't let it dry out. So if you apply some Neosporin, you keep steri strips on, you use silicone strips, all those things will help maintain the native moisture and encourage that wound to heal faster and better cosmetically. Sometimes we run into people and they call back after surgery and they say, I'm having this new pain. And so they want to come in and be seen and 99% of the time it's just the scar tissue that's happened during the healing, healing period. And then as people increase their range of motion slowly over time in the first couple of months after the operation, they get back to that normal range of motion. What they're doing is they're stretching out that scar tissue that's formed during the healing period. Scar tissue always softens with time. And when you stretch it or massage it, that's what stretching or massaging is, uh, it's a stretching of that tissue. You will accelerate that process and it will uh, stretch out a little more quickly. It's not a rapid process, but it happens a little bit faster when you do that. So sometimes despite all of our efforts uh, and our techniques, sometimes patients don't heal well. And so then we're faced with, what can we do? We can usually offer a scar revision Hopefully it's not the entire scar, it's just portions of it, but we'll do what we need to do in order to help the patient feel better uh, about their outcome. Uh, the, the scar revision certainly can be done, again, 99.9% .9 of them can be done in the office under local anesthesia. If they're really big, really significant, we can give you some oral sedation like Valium and Percocet to prep you beforehand to help you feel relaxed. But uh, most of them are done quite easily under local anesthesia alone. Rarely do we get asked, will insurance cover scar revision? And the answer is no. It's, scars, again, are a cosmetic um, entity, and so insurance does not cover any cosmetic surgery per se. Thanks for watching this video on breast reduction scars. Uh, please be sure to like and subscribe, and watch out for future videos just like this in the future. Thanks. Bye.